plaintiff, Jennifer Watford, dated the defendant, but she claimed she broke up with him after she looked in his bedroom window and saw him having sex with his ex-girlfriend. Jennifer says after she knocked on the defendant's window, he came outside and ripped her car door handle off, so she's suing. Defendant Samuel Thomas says on the night in question, he was sound asleep in his room when Jennifer came over at 2.30 in the morning. Samuel insists he put his hand on Jennifer's car door handle so they could talk, and she threw the car in reverse, and that's how the damage occurred. He's countersuing because Jennifer called Child Protective Services on him and his ex. Start with you. Well, Your Honor, I was dating Sam up until the point where I looked inside his bedroom window and I seen him having sex with his ex-girlfriend. When did you all start dating? Um, back in January of 2016. All right, and when did you catch him doing that? That was May of 2016. And were you all exclusive by that time? At that point, okay. he had said so. How did that work out? Everything was good up until- Really? I that night? No. Oh, dude. Oh, You're sorry. gonna tell me that, okay, everything oh. was good in the relationship up until that. That's what I wanna know how that worked out when you oh, saw that. Oh, that night? What made you come there? Um, intuition. He had so turned- Tease yourself and said, let me go. And go no. look behind his I, curtains um, and see what Earlier that day, <laughs> Um, he had called me and asked me to bring him something to eat. He was on house arrest. Well, before I left, he asked me to call him when I got home because he wanted me to come back. I said, sure. I would just have to put my kids over my neighbor's house for a few hours and I could come over. And um, when a couple hours go by, he texts me and he tells me to wait because his um, ex-girlfriend and her kids were coming over and to wait. Mm -hmm. So I said, that's fine, I don't mind. Um, and his few, kids, you mean? Yeah, those mm -hmm. are his children too. And he never answers the phone. I called three different times. The, mm -hmm. sec the third time, it went to the voicemail. So that's what made me suspicious. Okay. Because I felt like he wasn't telling me the whole truth right. about their relationship right. from the very beginning. And so how did that play out? You saw them inside. I saw them inside. You, I you knocked on the window. shook your head, mm, 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 mm. and left? No. You should have. What did you do? I knocked on the window, and then I got ready to leave. I got in my car, and that's when he came outside in his pajama pants, and he was like, you're tripping. What are you doing over here? My kids are here. I'm going to call you when um, you get in the house. I said, okay. When I told him I don't care about none of that, that's when he started yanking on my door handle. Plaintiff Jennifer Watford dated the defendant, but she claimed she broke up with him after she looked in his bedroom window and saw him having sex with his ex-girlfriend. Uh, go ahead, let me get some background from you, sir. Well, I met Jennifer in February of 2016. It wasn't nothing like that. We was just friends with benefits. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's all that was. Jennifer came over at 2.30 in the morning. This was at 2.30, but I had called her at 10, told her to bring me something to eat. She came through, she left, she said she was going get the kids settled in, whatever, however. I said, all right, but I'm going to call you because I may have my kids. So she in, she comes anyway. It's already 2.30 in the that morning. That is a lie. We're here at 2.30 in the morning. Yeah, I get to the car repairs She minute. knocked on my auntie's window, which is my witness. Kay. Then she came to my window and knocked on my window. She said she seen me having sex, but I wasn't doing that. I was asleep. It's 2.30 in the morning. I got my kids. No. It so was I go outside to try to talk to her, to calm her down. We all in the rut, you know. I go out there to try to talk to her. I go for the handle to talk to her. She puts the car in reverse. And that's what broke the handle. Okay. By the time she pull off, I'm walking towards the door. She put the car back in drive and was like basically trying to scare me or... Or run you over, or for run real. Down. It may not have been a scare. Ma'am, you want to come and give your testimony? State your name. Uh, I'm his auntie, Michelle Kendrick. Uh -huh. Judge happened? Mathis, she, it was at 2.35 in the morning. She knocked on my window first, because it made me get up and say, Who, who's at my window? The one was having sex was me in my room, not him. <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm, I'm being honest. 
So she looked in the wrong window. She's a bold face lie, your honor. She looked honor. in the wrong window. Okay. She looked in the wrong window. She looked in the wrong window. No. She looked in the wrong window. This is a bold face I was lie. one house and said, who? Be quiet. You don't come call this woman no lie. I'm not going to let you disrespect she, this uh, woman. Because I'm the one house said, mm -hmm. Sam, who's looking in my window? Who's peeping at my window, knocking on my window? So that made me go to him, to his room, hollering about his window. My mother, 79 years old with, de with dementia, she, she was so upset. We had to, you know, kind of calm her down. He ran out the door. She ran out there with him when she tried to run him out. Let's get to the car repairs, ma'am. What are you suing for other than obviously the handle? Um, he was ran off the road by the same woman in my car. I had just purchased my car two weeks before he was ran off the road. Mm -hmm. How did he get your car? I let him borrow it mm -hmm. because he had to be at work. And he came back and told you it, he had been run off the road no, and had um, it been damaged? What? No, I actually had an emergency mm -hmm. with my best friend and she needed to be rushed to the hospital mm -hmm. and he wasn't, I called and told him that it was an emergency and that I needed my car immediately. When I got there, Sam was already in handcuffs and he had told me that um, he was ran off the road and they caught him with his warrants. And he you also was arrested. Warrant? Yes, he had marijuana in my car okay. also. All right. I actually have the accident. How was your car this. damaged? Um, it was stuck in a ditch. Let's see your estimate. Sir, what do you say to this? Uh, to add to her story, like, she let me use her car because I was going to work. Mm -hmm. So after work, my, my child's mother wanted me to pick up the kids. So I picked up the kids and dropped them off to her. Well, she did see me in her car, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, basically was trying to follow me to her. And, the mother of your children? Yeah. Why? Because I had my kids around her. I called her, I let her know that uh, I was ran off the road and I had called the police because I was ran off the road. When the police got there, I knew I had warrants already, so I just let them know that I had a warrant for a uh, violation of probation. That's smart. What occurred then after then you let them know? Then that's when they apprehended me. Mm -hmm. By the time they apprehended me, Jennifer was walking up and I was letting her know what was going on. I was locked up three days. Uh, within the three days, I, I stayed in contact with Jennifer because we was friends. All right, so why shouldn't you pay for the repairs that are necessary? As a result of your illegal act, you just said you knew you had warrants, so that should have stopped you from driving. You knew you had an illegal status. So you driving the car was in the illegal act. Yeah, I was hoping I didn't get caught. But... <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your emotional distress? What did she do to you? Uh, I'm suing for emotional distress because she called CPS on me and my child's mother. And she made Tell false... Me how that went. What was that about? She made false allegations like... Uh, my son got skin, a skin disease that we haven't got looked at. And she was saying we was bad parents by smoking and drinking and fighting in front of the kids. And Ma'am, you do this? Um, I did do that. Why? Because his child was in the car when I, he ran, um, when she ran him off the road. And when I spoke with my lawyer about it, they told me to make a paper trail of the incident because it wasn't in the police report. It wasn't reported as the ex-girlfriend what about the other things? The We're not just talking about the incident. All the other things he said you alleged. You I didn't, didn't say, say anything, anything else about the skin disease. No. Okay. All right. Plaintiff Jennifer Watford dated the defendant, but she claimed she broke up with him after she looked in his bedroom window and saw him having sex with his ex-girlfriend. Do you have any evidence that she told them something other than re that regarding the car incident? Yeah. Uh... She never told CPS yeah, I'm about... I'm gonna read this. She never right. told CPS about the now car you're trying incident. to be funny. You're trying to make me look old. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't had to do this 17 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something, Your Honor? What you want to say? Oh, boy. The incident that... I'm not available. The incident... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the way I look at it, Your Go Honor, ahead. is what, the incident that say? happened at our house was a bad booty call went bad. <laughs> booty call That's went bad. That's the way bad. I look at it. All right. Because we had to call the police three or four times on this lady 
because she kept coming back and forth to her house. She'll leave, come back, leave, come back. So we had to call the police three or four times on her. All right. And that's where the CPS came in because, like... I don't have any specific allegations, though. Thank you. She doesn't say any of what you said. So $3,100 is the judgment. He does admit to... Um, uh, wrecking it, but says that it was he was a victim of a third party, and he was. But you caused the negligence, and negligence is the only thing necessary to assess uh, liability. And your emotional distress is dismissed. You can't prove her report involves something beyond the incident, and the incident is something that could reasonably be reported without uh, being considered defamation. Have a good day, folks. Thank you. Say it's an eat or get a real. She just trying to get a piece of the pie. I won my case, so it don't matter to me. It was a bad booty call gone bad. That's all I can say. And she lied. She won't get. I don't open. have to lie about she you. Was back there I don't have to lie about you because you nothing to lie about. Crackhead Betty.